Casio MTP 4500D slide rule bezel. Ooh, impressive. Let's have a closer look. All right. Yes, this is a real slide rule bezel. You know, I'll cover the slide rule bezel first before I get into the functions of the watch. Now, is this slide rule bezel actually usable? Uh, yes and no. Yes, it's usable, but only if you can read it because the complaint about this watch, and it is a valid one, is that it's really difficult to read the uh, inner ring there. See the numbers there in the inner ring? Now, for example, if I want to do let's just say multiplication okay so multiplication you move the number you want to multiply over the inner ring I can get this damn thing to focus there's a 10 on the inner ring so I move the 15 over the 10 and if I say okay what is 15 times 8 so I say, okay, outer ring 15, inner ring 8, there's the 8 over there, 12. Move the decimal place 1, and that would be 120. So 15 times 8 is 120. If I want to do division, we'll do 16, actually, I'm sorry, uh, 160 divided by 8. Okay, so that... In that instance, I will take this, the outer ring and divide it by the inner ring. So, again, if I can get the damn thing to focus right. Okay, so 16 divided by the 8, and then you go to the 10 for the result. I'm sorry, 160 divided by 8 is uh, 20. Ah, okay, anyway, so that's a, a very rough crash course in how to use a slide roll bezel. Yes, it does have MPH and kilometer per hour at the top. It does have nautical and not stat, I'm sorry, stat over on the left at the nine o'clock. So yeah, it's there. But again, it all depends if you can read that inner ring or not. If you can, then this is usable for you. If not, the watch just looks cool, which is basically the reason why I bought it. So what we have here is a stainless steel case, folded links, the uh, inner, and this is the supply bracelet. So you've got the shiny middle link and you've got a fold over clasp that locks like that as a, a double pusher, open it up like that. Oh, a note about this, that even though it does have four micro-adjustments, I notice that if I go past the second micro-adjustment, this will not, it will not lock. I mean, it does right now because I have it um, on the last one, but if I go past the second one to the third one, this doesn't allow it uh, to lock correctly. Fortunately, though... Being the, oh yeah, this is a 22, 22 millimeter wide. So fortunately, this right here, even though it's obviously not solid end link, you can throw on a NATO or leather or purlon or whatever you choose on this watch. It, it is very strap friendly, which is nice. And as you notice, it does have a screw down case back, which is also quite nice. It makes for very easy battery changes because in watches of this price point, this is a $50 watch, watches of this price point usually all that you get is a press down case back which is relatively easy to get off the problem is getting it back on and if you have a dome uh, excuse me a crystal like this that has nothing on top this is a flat crystal of course mineral crystal it's not sapphire or anything like that you can even with it flat like this when putting it back on on a press-on case back, you can potentially shatter the crystal. Ask me how I know. I have actually done it before. Not on this watch, but on others where I tried to press a case back, back on only to shatter the crystal, and that sucks. But on this one, there's no worries on that because all you need is a case back removal tool, which you can get on eBay or Amazon for under $10. So that's fantastic. Uh, as far as the weight of the piece, 
it's got some heft to it, it but it's certainly not ridiculously heavy or anything like that but it feels proper which is great the uh, the lugs do curve down which is nice now on my and this is one of the reasons I bought this thing on my six and a half inch wrist this thing lays flat looks great and you barely hear any rattling however 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 if you wear yours loose yeah it's gonna rattle well, let me see what happens when I... Yeah, it's going to rattle. That's only if you wear it loose, though. But if you wear it like I do... Get it back on. Okay, if you wear it like I do, then you barely hear it. And I have, I keep about a, like a, a pinky's worth of uh, space when I size a metal bracelet for my wrist. If I go any more, more loose than that, I just don't like it. But if you keep it like that, then yes, you can use the supplied bracelet and it fits just fine. Yes, it is true. You get this. There is a gap here. But fortunately, this is not sharp. So if you brush your finger against it or something else like that, no, it will not injure you. You will not uh, be in pain. Another nice thing about this strap is that it is not a hair puller, which is great. That cannot be said for all Casio bracelets, but for this one, actually pretty good. And as you saw, I think I mentioned this, but yeah, it is a double pusher. And it, it stays put. Oops, turn that around. So, okay, now let's describe the watch and uh, a few other things about it. Now, to set it... Pull the crown, set your time. To use the stopwatch, that's you start with this, you pause with this, you reset with this. So if I start it, there it goes. To pause, press it again. To reset, there we go. Now there is a click when you first start the stopwatch. However, when you pause it, no click like that and the reason for the no click is because when you go to uh, how should I describe this let me reset it again when you start it it's also releasing a dial here one of the sub dials and I'll explain those in a second that is why there is actually a click but when you actually pause it it's not resetting the dials so that's why there's no click on this but when you Go to reset with this one there is a click and that's because it's resetting these two top dials let me explain these sub dials here okay top dial 12 o'clock position that is for stopwatch minutes 0 through 60 9 o'clock dial that is an hour counter for the stopwatch it has if I can get that in focus it will count up to 12 hours 6 o'clock subdial, seconds only, only for the time. You'll notice that this hand keeps moving even when the stopwatch is not running. That is the regular seconds hand. The only time that stops is if you pull the crown to set the time, then it stops. But after that, actually, let me get the hands out of the way here just so you can. We'll do the 10 10 thing. There we go. 10 10, everyone's favorite time on a watch. So when it's running regularly, that seconds hand will always be moving unless you're setting the time. Now the last thing I'll say about this is that if you get into a situation, and a lot of people think the watch is broken, when this happens, it's not. Now let me just show this first. I'm going to put this watch into a broken mode. Alright, now let's just say you're running a stopwatch. You're doing the stopwatch thing as you normally would, and you go to reset it, and uh-oh, it did not reset back to the 12. Is the watch broken? No. You can reset it easily. Pull the crown, and then just press the top right pusher manually. Now, as I'm doing this, it's tick see how it, the, uh, the long seconds hand is ticking away, but only when I press this? Just keep pressing this. 
this is a manual adjustment until it gets all the way back to the 12th. Like that. Then press the crown in. And then do a test. Okay. So, running, running, running. Let's reset. And, ooh, back to 12. That is how to reset the position of the stopwatch seconds hand. So, again, decent watch. Let me put it back on the wrist here. And again, for my six and a half inch wrist, this actually sits quite nicely. Although I did take out a bunch of links on this, so this will fit, I believe, all the way up to an eight inch wrist, possibly slightly larger. This is a 42 millimeter, I think. I think it's a 42. It's either a 42 or 41 and a half, something like that. The lug to lug was something like 45 or 45 and a half, it's short, which is good, which is good. This isn't a big guy, whatever. The trade-off of the smaller size, though, is, of course, really tough to read that inner ring. But if you don't use the side roll, if you just want it for the appearance, well, then you're good. I mean, this, this, this looks great. It's a very nice-looking piece. Signed buckle, but no signed crown which is okay for its price point. So there you go, Casio MTP4500D. I'm happy with it, I'm keeping it.